how to use chariots. I've always found chariots hard to use just like elephants so I've been practicing and today I'm going to show you two different ways of using them. One the immediate way you think you're going to use them in a frontal assault and the second way is going to be an outflanking maneuver and you can take a guess at which one works the best. So I'm going to fast forward here but basically I'm setting up a standard line formation, chariots in front, infantry behind, I have no skirmishers because I can't be bothered to wait for those skirmishers to not really do much and I'm not going to lure him in anyway so yeah don't bother with that and of course I have formed all of my cavalry on the right as I normally do that does expose my left flank to a risk of being overwhelmed by his cavalry um, but I just find it easier that way I just cannot be bothered swapping between the left and right flank and managing two bits of cavalry and I find that if you can mass the impact then you will typically defeat his flank before your flank falls So here's the enemy, set up in a standard formation, he has slightly more cavalry on his right flank, i.e. my left flank, than on the other flank, which is a little bit of a concern, but we'll probably deal with that. Here we are, moving forward, you can see the formation. I tried this a couple times before I really got the hang of it, because uh, the chariots would outpace my infantry and they would actually die before my infantry arrived and here we are, I'm starting a charge with the chariot um, oh no wait, I'm not I'm fainting ah, oh, here we go so I've set the chariots to move through the line which is what you'd expect, you'd expect the chariots to just run down any opposition uh, it didn't work with the elephant, we'll see if it works with the chariot. If you look at the charge value, the charge bonus value of chariots is only down in the 10 to 15 range, whereas cataphracts are in the 60s. That's a bit of concern. And the first chariot is breaking already, and they haven't achieved much in terms of losses towards the enemy. And my infantry hasn't even arrived yet, and they're already broken. So I send my general over to support the left. You know, that's the that's the risk I was willing to take. Weak left flank, getting hit by his cavalry, but then sending my general into support. It's a bit risky, but it normally works. Now at the moment he's holding the center, I've got basically nothing in the center, my chariots are way gone. They haven't accomplished much. His units have barely taken any damage. Pulling my general back out. I figured out how to pull out cavalry. You know, a lot of people are complaining on YouTube on forums that they can't pull out the cavalry. What you do is you select your cavalry unit, you right click where you want it to go to pull out, and you just keep frantically right clicking that spot, and eventually it will pull out the units. The problem is that when they get engaged in melee, they will try and do that as a priority over the order you gave them, i.e., to move out but if you keep giving them that order then gradually they will disengage themselves from whatever melee they're in. So at the moment I've won the right flank as we knew I would. The left flank is still holding. Now he's he's doing a bit of, a bit of a blunder here because if you look at my general he's basically fighting six seven units alone. That means that half the enemy army is focused on my general and the rest of my army can go and chop him up piecemeal. I'm not too concerned about my general. And actually there's a bit of a an error in this replay. For some reason some of the units on his side are shown as uh, still uh, functional, not shattered. Whereas uh, when I was playing it they actually weren't. So this looks as if he has more units in action than I do and, and actually that's not the case. He's about to lose. and there we are he is broken all over the field the few units he has that are actually formed not really doing anything 
and my cavalry is still alive. Now this is uh, the advantage to massing your cavalry is that the losses are spread over a larger number of units so you keep your cavalry in the game for a lot longer. I've still got three active cavalry units even though I charge them straight into a mass of enemies. And you see those units that look as if they're not broken down there, those? They'll disappear in a minute and the game is going to fix itself or, or whatever. But anyway, he's running away. That's the bottom line. But this was a hard-fought victory. I don't think my chariots did much. Basically, they ran in and died, which meant that in terms of value, I was down by about 25% when I actually attacked and against a human player I would probably have lost this one. So let's try that again. I've chosen a slightly different map but you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the only thing is I didn't want any forests to obscure the view and so on. I have this hill in front of me which I'd love to fortify on but then I realized oh wait he isn't actually going to attack me now is he? So off we go. Now, the formation here. I've got my infantry grouped with my general as my holding force. It's a standard hammer and anvil, this. Um, my infantry, which is just sword infantry, I could have gone for some phalanx or spear type infantry. That would probably have been more effective for what I'm using for here, but never mind. That's the holding force. On my right flank, I've got the cavalry in front and the chariots right behind them. So basically, the cavalry is screening for my chariot. Why is that? Well, I want to make sure that when we go into action the cavalry will sweep aside anything that's going to block my chariot from getting around the enemy and hit him in the rear. You see all of the, the infantry is massed on the rear with the enemy? I'm going to go for that with my chariot. And we're going to see what kind of damage we can do with that. I'm going to do, you see the formation here, not an echelon, but I am going to attack him at an angle in an attempt to engage his right flank first, i.e. my left flank, draw enemy units down towards my left such that it will open a gap for my cavalry to come in and my chariots to go around. So my cavalry is basically going to go into that gap between my units and his units, probably fighting his cavalry, and the chariots are going to go all the way back here and assuming that his infantry has moved up with the rest, we'll see what kind of impact that makes. So my general is foolhardy and doing some stupid stuff. Anyway. Oh, look at that. They've also got brains. They're using their shields. <laughs> shields up over your heads when you're getting bombarded. Brilliant. Enemy is hesitating. My formation is still where it should be. I've started the cavalry so that we should get a simultaneous impact of infantry and cavalry. And there you see he's sending his cavalry to hit my infantry on my left flank. And that is dangerous, right? If he breaks through, um, yeah, it's going to cause an issue. Not big issue necessarily. He hit my infantry on the right flank as well, which is great because that means my cavalry can plow into him from his flank. I've sent my general to reinforce with my left. Cavalry is taking care of the right, and here come the chariot, and you see that mass of infantry in the center? Yeah, that's where we're going. The first two groups of chariots are coming in in a tight turn, but still running down alongside the line. And there we go. They start with 90, and they're down to, within a couple of seconds, they're down to 70 odd. So that's a somewhat bigger impact than what we saw last time from the chariot taking a beating here. My right flank is almost cleared up. The cavalry is freeing up. The chariots are doing their job. They've broken two or three infantry units already. I do wonder about the significance of that low charge bonus they get compared to what shock cavalry gets in charge bonuses. I mean heavy cataphracts or royal cataphracts, whatever the name is, 63 charge bonus. Eh. I don't know. Anyway, look at that guy. He's getting hammered. Yeah, there we go. And the rest, as they say, is history. 
So even though I won the other battle, as you can clearly see, this was a much more effective way of winning, and my losses are comparatively smaller. And the last one was one to one, more or less, and this the losses are three to one in my favor, obviously. So there we are. He's gone. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if there are scenarios or tactics you would like me to explore, and I'll try and do it. And until next time, stay frosty.